the Ascension of Christ, which occurred on Thursday, and we celebrate today, is one of the most neglected understandings concerning Christ. Understandably, we're super, super focused on his life, his incarnation, his teachings, his passion, his death, his resurrection. Because this is what results in our forgiveness of sins. The ascension happens and we think, wow, cool, Jesus takes off like Superman. Isn't that wonderful? And then we kind of hang around and do nothing. We just have to wait for Pentecost. But then when Pentecost happens next Sunday, the, the, we think, yay, birthday party. Now we know what to do again. But we don't quite know what to do with the ascension. We miss a lot, though, in not understanding or knowing what to do with the ascension. We can actually learn a lot from the early church on this matter. For the early church, the ascension was critical. It was the climax of redemption and the necessary condition for the descent of the Holy Spirit. The ascension was the climax of redemption because it completes what they saw as a cycle of dissension and ascension. Jesus descends into, into, the, into death on Good Friday and ascends from the dead on Easter. In the Incarnation, Jesus descends from heaven and ascends back to heaven in the Incarnation. And the cycle begins again with the dissension of the Holy Spirit on Pentecost. This is very important for us, but in order for us to understand and see how important this is, we have to go all the way back to the beginning. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. This is the beginning of John's Gospel, which links it all the way back to the beginning of creation. The second person of the Trinity was present in the making of the world in all things, as John tells us. And in him is life. John even calls him the light of men. Yet prior to his incarnation, there was one thing that could not be said of the Son. He did not have humanity. Jesus was God, fully and completely. And in this, and in this Son is the light that shines in the darkness of sin. Light which casts this darkness out, and, casts, and, and as darkness is cat out, cast out, light comes present. But humanity had fallen into the darkness of sin. So in order to complete the cycle of dissension and, asc and ascension, God had to begin a set of cycles himself. In order for God to redeem his fallen creation, he had to take on the one thing that he did not have already, human nature. Until Christ was incarnated, the relationship was creator thing. In the Incarnation, Jesus takes on human nature. He becomes one of us in order to help us do what we cannot do on our own, complete the ascension por portion of the cycle. We easily started the, started the cycle, and in doing so, set things in motion that would change the nature of our relationship forever. In descending in the Incarnation, the second person of the Trinity, the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. He who was God emptied himself, taking on the form of a servant, that he might become one of us. And as one of us, he would redeem us all from sin by his death. And in that dissension, he was able to then ascend to life again. And when he does this, in his dissension, he gathers all those who had gone before him into death and brings them into new life in him. And then on Easter Sunday, we witness his resurrection. And for the next 40 days, he tells us and that, 
tells us that in our union with him, we too will have a resurrection like him. We follow him in his dissension to the dead and his ascension to life again. And then after his 40 days are over, he ascends another time, this time to the right hand of the Father. And because he does this a week and a half later, there was one more dissension, one that will become the latter by which we will finally make our ascension to again be with Christ where he is in the presence of the Father. This is the importance of the ascension that we celebrate today. Christ ascends to the right hand of the Father, having accomplished that which he set out to do. And when he ascends to the right hand of the Father, he ascends not as he was before, as the pre-incarnate Word of God, but as the fully human Jesus, bringing with him his humanity and ours. And because of this, our humanity is now, is now fit to bear the Holy Spirit. So on Pentecost, the Holy Spirit then comes to dwell in us. And because of this, we begin our own process of dissension and ascension by doing the work that he has given us to do. We descend as Christ does in his incarnation, by imitating him and divesting ourselves of the mantle that we have been given as Christians, we take up the towel of the servant and then go about washing the feet of his creation, making them fit in him to rise with him in his resurrection. We imitate our Lord and do his work. We should not do this by simply shouting down from our tall tower the rules and the statutes of God and expecting everyone to understand them and to do them on their own. Rather, we should imitate our Lord and come down and be among the people we are calling up. And then we should show them a better way as Christ did for us. Again, we should do this in an imitation of our Lord who, though he dwelt among us, he did not take our sinful nature unto himself. He calls us to be among the people and as his light in the midst of darkness. A lamp is not lit and then put under a basket. Rather, it should be used to lighten the way. As Christians, when we descend to be with the people, we should not take on their sinful state. That is, we should not take on the standards of the world, but rather we should allow, allow the light of Christ to shine in us as we do the work that he has given us to do. Then, and only then, can we imitate our Lord and show them the way to the Father. If we do not allow the light of Christ to shine in us, all we have done is allow those who are blind in darkness to lead us into further darkness when we both fall into a hole. But when we allow the light of Christ to shine in us, we can then imitate our Lord and light a lamp in them that helps to lead them to where Christ leads also, to new life with the Father. The Holy Spirit in the descension of Pentecost lights the lamp in our hearts that empowers us to climb the ladder that leads to the Father where Christ our brother is. It is a cycle of dissension and ascension that leads from sin to redemption, from death to life, from exile, to inheritance. This is what we celebrate today, the completion of our redemption as the early church saw it. What we will celebrate next week is the yearly reminder of our call to imitate our Lord and to descend that we may, we may cause others to ascend as well. In this we imitate our Lord, and in imitating our Lord we further unite ourselves to him. And then we re-cement that bond between us that results in our ascension to be with him where he is forever. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Son.